Solutions are homogeneous mixtures that are defined by their components and the concentration of those components. In this image here we see iron chloride solutions of varying concentrations. So it's obvious just by looking at them that their properties will be different. For one, they're different colors. However, if you have a pure substance such as an element or a compound, the element or compound can be defined purely by its name. The properties are consistent. However, with solutions, the properties vary based on the concentration and the components. For example, for an element or compound, it will have a list of distinguishing characteristics such as its density, its molar mass, its melting point and boiling point. All these properties are consistent for an element or a compound. But for solutions, the density will vary, the molar mass is meaningless, rather we talk about the molar concentration of solutions, the melting point and boiling points will vary for solutions. So the properties of solutions vary based on the components and the concentrations of those components. So when we talk about solutions, we have to have a common language. The solvent is the component that exists in the greater amount within the solution, whereas the solute is the component in the least amount. Sometimes you have more than one solute within a solution, and the solution is the sum of the solute or solutes and the solvent. So we want to keep that language straight. Solvent versus solute versus solution, which is the sum of the solute or solutes and the solvent. And again, a solution can be referred to as a homogeneous mixture which means that it is composition is consistent throughout. Let's take a look at a simulation of a solution. In this case we have a table salt, sodium chloride. This is water, H2O, and I'm going to shake in some table salt. The green circles are chloride ions and the red circles are sodium ions. And you can see that when the salt is placed in water, it dissolves. The ions separate. Let's look at a slightly soluble salt just for comparison. In this case, this salt is mercury 2 bromide. And you can see that a little bit of it will dissolve but when we start putting more in, we reach a saturation very quickly and we end up with some of it settling out. So we just still have some ions in solution, but most of it settles out. So what we want to be able to do is think about what's happening when a solution is formed. For ionic compounds, it's very important to recognize that the ions themselves separate when a solution is formed. So we think about the ionic as, say, uh, table salt, sodium chloride, sodium chloride salt would have been a crystal with a lot of ions surrounding the negative, surrounding the positive, and the positive surrounding the negative, etc., in the crystal. And when that is dropped into the solution, the sodium ion and the chloride ion separate and that's how the salt dissolves. Covalent compounds, on the other hand, um, the, the molecules separate from one another when they form a homogeneous solution, a homogeneous mixture that we call a solution. For example, if we had um, water as our solvent, again, would disperse within um, and be surrounded by water molecules. Okay, but what we don't see is the C coming apart from the other C or the H is coming off. Um, in this case, the molecules separate. 
In certain cases, which we'll see in another video, for example, when we have acids or molecular bases, those compounds will ionize to a certain degree in water, but that's a different story for later. In general, unless it's an acid or a base, the covalent compounds, the molecules separate from each other, whereas the ionic compounds, the ions separate from each other, giving us solutions with very different characteristics.